Hey, today I'm going to talk about the Freudian term repetition compulsion, which is the unconscious compulsion to repeat things from typically your childhood. So if you had chaos in your childhood like I did, you will replicate that in your adulthood. That's just kind of how we're wired. We're wired to kind of equate familiarity with security, which is unfortunate because a lot of times we become familiar with things that weren't very good for us as children. If you had a narcissistic mother, you become acclimatized to that. And the other thing about that is that we see our traumas or actually we don't see our traumas. We get these blind spots for our particular traumas and we wind up picking people as partners that replicate the same trauma that we had as children. So if you had an alcoholic parent, you will pick an alcoholic partner. Now, not always, of course, but I noticed this in my family practice that I would see families that had a lot of alcoholism and then the children of these families would pick alcoholics as partners. And I'd be like, what are you doing? Like, what are you doing? And I think we have a blind spot for our own traumas because we equate, human beings equate familiarity with security. It's just how we're wired. We're wired to assume what is normal for us in childhood is something that is good, is something that we should replicate. It's familiar. So we equate familiarity with security and we go about creating that same security that isn't secure at all, actually it causes more problems in our adulthood. So I always ask people that I work with or whatever, what was normal for you in childhood? What kind of negative experiences did you get used to? Did you acclimatize to? Because the chances are you will replicate those in your adult life. And not only will you replicate them, you won't see them. And I see that with people who have significant trauma. Like I had a guy come in to see me about chronic anxiety. And I've probably mentioned this before, but by the, from the age of 7 till 12, he was physically assaulted by his dad. Like he was literally beaten by his dad. And when I asked him about that, he said, well, that's not really trauma. And I said, well, yeah, yeah, it is. But he said, that's not really trauma. It made me strong. It made me a good salesman. It made me have the ability not to take no for an answer. And I said, no, man, <laughs> that's trauma. So we get these traumas when we're younger and we assume that they're normal because we don't know any different as children. We don't know how we're raised is different than how we're raised the person beside us in whatever housing complex or street that we live on. We don't know what's going on, so we just assume that what we experience is normal, quote unquote normal. Even when we have the sense like, geez, you know, this doesn't feel right. This doesn't feel very good. And like I said, over the course of time, what we wind up doing is we have blind spots to these particular traumas because we make it up in our minds that this is normal. It's normal to have a, an alcoholic mother who yells at you and screams at you. That's normal, you know. And what happens is that we miss that ability to see it when we get older. So when we get older, we miss the opportunity to see that we're going into things. So I see a lot of people, the people that I see that have the most intense attraction to someone else, almost always, not always, not always, but almost always, those intense attractions are basically just mirroring your childhood trauma. So I would see patients in my practice that had alcoholic parents that would pick an alcoholic partner and I would say, well, are they an alcoholic? And they'd say, yeah, but they're so wonderful in so many other ways. Like they're so great in this way and they're so great in that way, but they are an alcoholic, yeah. And it just made me wonder like, why do we do this? And I think Freud hit the nail on the head because he said we have this compulsion to repeat what was normal for us in childhood in our adulthood. And I say that to everyone, I said, what was normal for you in childhood and how are you replicating that in your adulthood? For me, it was chaos. I replicated chaos in my, in my adult relationships early on. There's a reason why I've been you know, divorced twice and married three times is because I replicated chaos in my relationships. I also replicate chaos by taking on too much. Now I'm getting better at that, but that's another way that I see people who had trauma as children, 
they keep themselves so busy, like way, way too busy, because when you're too busy, you don't have a chance to really focus on the negative. And it's a, a dissociation. It's, it's, a way of, it's a way of coping with this angst that's still in us that I call alarm. So when we get traumatized as children, we create this alarm in our bodies. And I've said this before, when you abuse, neglect, and abandon a child, the child doesn't stop loving the parent, they stop loving themselves. And when you stop loving yourself as a child, you start finding reasons why you are a bad person. You start judging, abandoning, blaming, and shaming yourself, what I call jabs. And this starts very early, especially if we have trauma in our childhood environments. This starts very, very early, and it creates this split in us when we judge, abandon, blame, and shame ourselves. And that split creates this alarm, and the alarm is what feeds the anxiety. And the anxiety on some level is a repetition compulsion as well, because when we were kids and we were going through trauma and we were powerless, the only option we had was to go into our heads. We didn't have the option of staying in our bodies because that's where the alarm is. That's where the pain is. So we would go into our heads and worry and that becomes a coping strategy or a defensive adaptation to the trauma that we're under. And then as adults, as Freud said, we replicate the same trauma. So when we're anxious, we're basically just replicating that same trauma. We're knocking ourselves into emotional dysregulation with the worry because that emotional dysregulation was familiar and we equate familiarity with security. And that's why I say, you know, if you had trauma, if you had trauma in your, in your childhood home, the word familiar can be broken down into two, two words, family and liar. So your family essentially lies to you about what should be familiar and what should be safe and what should be secure, but it's not. And it's such a huge understanding for people to realize, oh, I create chaos because chaos was normal in my family. I married someone who takes from me because being taken from was normal in my family. I take abuse from my partner, my kids, my parents, whatever, because that was normal. That was what I expected as a child. Because a child's brain is just this emotional sponge. Like we absorb our childhood in a very feeling way because we're not really that cognitive until we're seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years old. Before that, we're, we're basically little feeling sponges. So what, whatever feeling was normal for us when we were young, we will gravitate back to that same feeling. So if being off balance as a child was normal for you, you will gravitate back to being off balance as an adult. For me, it's creating, it's taking on too many responsibilities. You know, that's the reason I became a medical doctor. I, I took on a ton of responsibilities. Also the reason I burned out, by the way. But I think just re recognizing, recognizing what was normal, what was traumatic in your childhood. And it doesn't have to be a huge trauma either. If you're a sensitive human being, it could be just a parental mismatch. You just didn't feel connected to either one of your parents or specifically your mother. So you begin looking for this magical other, this magical other person that will fulfill that void. But at the same time, you pick people that fill the same secure mechanism and I put secure in quotation marks again there, feel the same familiar mechanism that you did as a child. And when we can recognize what we do, doesn't mean we'll automatically just fix it because like I said, it is a compulsion. We do have a compulsion to do this. But we can, we can be aware of it. And then we can go into the ABCs. I'm aware of this tendency to kind of go towards this person when I know they're probably not good for me. So body, breath, get into your body, really see, okay, am I making a choice here or is this a compulsion? And you can tell, like if you scan your body, you can kind of tell whether or not you're, you're in a stable sort of body state or you're dysregulated and you're looking for someone to save you. And for a lot of us as kids, when we had trauma and we were powerless and we didn't feel like there was anyone out to talk to or to help us, finding that magical other who we can who we think we can say will save us becomes um, 
a, compul a compulsion. It really does. I know when I was younger, I thought that I would find this magical other, this partner that would somehow complete me and that would be it. But it doesn't work that way. It winds up that you wind up attracting the people that are, are very reminiscent of your old trauma. And like I said, the, the people that have the most intense attractions to each other often mirror each other's childhood wounds. And that's when I come up with the old saying that, uh, you know, this is when your soulmate becomes your cellmate because as soon as you get into that partnership, you will start triggering each other. And some people say the repetition compulsion is there as a, a protective mechanism in a way in that when we go through trauma as children and then we see the same trauma as adults, we have a chance to process it and metabolize it. And that may be true. That may be true. It's a bit of an optimistic view of our psyche, but it's possible. It's possible that we are trying to process now as adults what we couldn't process as children. I kind of lean towards the more neuroscientific you know, bent that we are just framed, like it's just imprinted into us, that particular trauma. And there is a familiarity with it and we just keep going towards it. So what do you do? is you come, become very aware of what was traumatic for you. Like for me, chaos, not knowing what was going to go on with my father was a huge deal. So I learned how to really read my father. Like if he started getting a little down, I'd go, is he getting into depression? You know, Or if he started being a little happier than, than I thought he should be, I would read his system. It's like, well, maybe he's heading into mania. So there was always this reading of other people that I'm quite good at. But the problem with when you're really good at reading other people is that you're not so good at reading yourself. Something's got to give, like at what cost. So I found that I got very good at reading other people and that was very helpful for me, especially as a medical doctor. But it doesn't really help me. You know, there's a child in me with their hands up going, hey, you know, I'm here, help me, help me. And I'm like, no, I got to go help someone else. I got to go help someone else. I got to go do another shift at the hospital or whatever. And that's how I created chaos. So now that I recognize how I create chaos in my own life by taking on too much is a big one for sure. Having attention deficit disorder, which I do, I, I have 15 windows open at the same time. And I try, I try to say to myself, hey, stay with this. Stay with this. And it's hard because the compulsion is to create this chaos in my life because that's what was normal for me. And again, I know I keep repeating this. I know I keep repeating, repeating the repetition compulsion. But we will gravitate back to whatever was normal for us in childhood. So we have to realize what was normal for you in childhood. Was that traumatic? And how are you replicating that same trauma and trying to stop it? Try to be more organized. I have an app now that has a to-do thing on it that basically whenever I think of something, which is a lot, I just put it into that. And then I can kind of let it go. But there still is this compulsion to have 15 windows open on my computer and answer 15 things at once. And then I'm in, when I'm in the middle of something, I will go, oh, I wonder how my sales are doing. And I'll go check that. And then I'll get sidetracked into like 15 different things. And it'll take me another hour to get back to the place that I was originally. So that's my repetition compulsion is to create chaos in my life. I would invite you to question, what's yours? What was traumatic for you as a child? And how are you replicating that same trauma as an adult? And I'll see you next time.